Hafada, everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of Asada. Hafada Skibbeth. Hafada, everyone, and Hafada to Dallas. Guys, we are back in Asada, and it is so good to be back. Very sorry about missing an episode last week. Just had some real life stuff I had to do. And um, thanks to Skib for letting me take that time as well. Uh, it's really, really good to be back. And um, to, if you look on the screen, you're going to notice that I'm kind of doing some modifications to your roundabout. Skib, man, I love your roundabout. Don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it, uh, it looks very, uh, very interesting and very good. And I love when uh, there are like roundabouts or intersections and having let's say other intersections near to that intersection uh, and it makes uh, from my point of view it makes it look uh, very very good really and don't worry about it well can, well can i just say that like you know the reason why i wanted to build here is because i wanted to make a historical town center and you know the center part of El, um, El Canem. i figured this would probably be the best place for it um on the other side uh, of the other side to where you built um, in a live stream a little while ago and um, pretty close to the palace which I feel like that makes a lot makes a lot of sense I'm um, taking a lot of inspiration from a roundabout in Cairo and as you can see like the road the roundabout itself is a bit of a mess and there are roads kind of shooting off from it that um, kind of fork off into this like direction that kind of reminds me of a layout of something in Europe so you know this is like the closest to a European build I've ever done, um, which might seem a little bit strange when we're kind of basing this um, pretty far away from Europe. However, like the way a lot of countries sort of work, they have a, a lot of uh, references to Europe, you know, especially when they were colonized by, you know, um, a European country. I'd imagine at some points, Osada was probably colonized by um, a different country to um, I guess it's native native inhabitants so um, yeah. you know I was kind of thinking that I'm in a bit of a European town center slash an Osarian town center like do you know what I mean by yes, that yes, yes. Like, it looks like uh, maybe some Romanian colonized this a uh, long time ago but <laughs> I'm happy to make it a Romanian colonized uh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, I always find it really interesting when, you know, you go to another country, you find um, another country on Google Earth, and you kind of figure out its past and, you know, what sort of colonized history it's had. And, you know, Asara would be no different, you know, if, if we're going to stick with some sort of realism, Asara is going to have some sort of uh, colonized background. And so it's really kind of cool to figure out what that was going to look like and try and find some um, European buildings off the workshop because um i kind of went for a bit of a french theme i felt like that was a good mix between european and like a bit of a middle eastern sort of a feel and um as you can see right now i'm actually just plopping down a whole bunch of probably like more landmark buildings to kind of give a bit of a base of where i'm going to be building so you know we've got like a town hall i'd imagine maybe it's some sort of museum and i did place down the giant mosque However, I don't actually detail that yet. Um, that's yet to be detailed. So, um, Skib, if you want to take on that challenge next week uh, to detail it, or if you want to leave it to me, I just thought I'd plop it down and maybe we'll choose another location for it all. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm glad uh, I was thinking long time ago, which one of us will be the one that uh, will uh, start building here in front of the palace and in the maybe in the downtown area or... Um, how do you want to call it? Because it, it is between the palace and between the between station there. And uh, actually, I'm kind of glad you started doing this um, because I've seen just a little peek from what uh, and how it, this build is going to look at the end. And it is quite impressive, man. I mean, you again, once more, you raised the bar for this. And. Uh, it really is look, looking pretty, pretty damn good. Even for Osaka, this is looking very, very good. Well done. I, I mean, it, it's... Thanks, man. It's wow. And I can't... Uh, I keep saying this, and also you say the same thing. But I, I can't wait for... Uh, to uh, to load the game, the save game that you, uh, you left for me. Uh, to see it uh, even better. And to take some inspiration, because I need inspiration from this. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, like, to be honest, I really wasn't feeling like building in this town center, to be honest. I was um, kind of thinking to be 
building a bit more of like a financial district, a bit more of a modern area. However, I, when I was looking at the build that you did in the last episode, those slums on the mountainside, and I was like looking from the slums over Elkanem, I just was really, I just really wanted something to be here, you know, I just, I'm so tired of seeing a big empty gap yeah. in front of that palace, you know, we just need something in the middle here, so I just thought, stuff it, I'll just do it, and, um, you know, it kind of took me a little while to get into the swing of it, because I don't usually build in a European sort of a theme, um, that is, like, I, I just don't ever really, I don't know, that's like, this, this is definitely the first European-esque build I've done. And so it took a little while to get into the right mind frame, but you know, once I sort of got my groove, it was really easy and I um, really enjoyed it. And I, I probably could have continued for ages and ages, but you know, the time's ticking when you're trying to make these time lapses and you just got to cut yourself off. Every yeah, I know what you mean. And uh, I know what you mean when you say you got into your groove, because indeed when you have the inspiration and when you start plopping stuff and you see it is looking exactly as you were thinking uh, or maybe even better uh, then the inspiration is like uh, boosting itself you know and it's like oh yeah let me do this and this and this oh let me hit this it is it is like that and i'm glad it, this, this if this is the first time when you do a european uh, kind of build because this is a combination between eastern europe and uh, central europe uh, then uh, well done my friend again once more well done Thanks, man. Thanks. Much appreciated. I um, I was really kind of limited with what I could choose from, to be honest. So, um, you know, I was trying to find the the most Middle Eastern European buildings we have, uh, on the workshop at least, and that was really tricky. I also wanted to get a lot of uh, more modern commercial buildings, as you can see me playing with right now. Um, I was taking heaps of inspiration from, um, you know, places in the kind of historical downtown of Cairo where, um, you know, they have a bit more of a, like a bit more of a French quarter, I want to say. I, I could be wrong. I think I saw that somewhere on Wikipedia. But, um, you know, it was kind of like an interesting little downtown and, like, I, I wanted to kind of follow that layout a little bit, you know, the style of buildings and how they sort of uh, flow with the road network. By the way, like, the road network is so different to the regular grids that I'm used to. Um, like, I don't know if it's similar to you in um, Romania, Skip, but like I noticed looking Google, Google Earth that like a lot of European countries they have these like central roundabouts and then these um, they, all these roads sort of come off these uh, roundabouts and they're not really following a particular grid they kind of go in a bit more of a triangular yeah, yeah. Uh, pattern which um, was really unusual yeah 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 true very true it's either uh, triangulars or um, even uh, squares and so on but if it's a road coming uh, out um, from roundabout or something like this yeah it is a madness but I think here in Europe we are already used to roundabouts I mean roundabouts is the, is the life <laughs> it's it's a European thing yeah, isn't it? I guess, so, I guess so, yeah. Spain has the most of them so yeah no way I, I didn't know that yeah uh, Armesto uh, shared some time ago a, a link with some info about countries that have roundabouts and um, Spain had the mo has actually the most of them and not only most of them I mean it's like roundabout near roundabout inside roundabout above roundabout something like that in some regions it's like madness <laughs> Romania is uh, still um, let's say beyond with these roundabouts but uh, it happened some time ago in a big city in Romania, it's called Brasov, a very touristic city and uh, as soon as the mayor changed the entire things there and plopped lots of roundabouts, people, first of all, people were crazy, what, what is this, we prefer traffic lights and so on, but after they saw the traffic is more fluently uh, and um, uh, people are going to work or coming from work faster than usual, they are now happy and from since then uh, lots of other cities from Romania took uh, inspiration with this thing and we have now quite a lot of roundabouts in, uh, in especially in Bucharest so yeah that's really interesting um I, I didn't really know that I just know that Australia we don't really have I mean we've got don't get me wrong we do have roundabouts but they're just not as not as um impressive as the ones I've seen in Europe and uh, like we've got nothing nothing on the ones in Spain I guess and um, 
and even a sewer, like I wanted there to be like a couple of different roundabouts, but I, I really hate building them. I, I, I hate building roundabouts. And you've built like the best looking roundabout of, I've probably ever seen. And um, the one in Osara is just like so perfect. And I really just wanted to, you know, like I feel like your one functions so nicely, but I actually kind of wanted to make it a little bit more chaotic, you know, kind of have those roads coming off it and really seeing some traffic get stuck behind and, um, you know, lots of cars kind of coming into this yep. um, little district here. And, you know, we need a bit more madness in, I'm in Osara, I reckon. Like, we need way more traffic. Yeah, exactly. I love chaos. I know it sounds <laughs> strange and uh, crazy. Uh, maybe because I'm used to it with uh, these kind of things uh, in my city in Bucharest here. And um, when you have to go, when it's the rush hour, it's uh, dead hour, not rush hour. It's like that. And um, I'm used to these kind of things. So I love, and plus, I think in Osaka, we really do need chaos traffic because mm. that's how we both imagine it long time ago and we still didn't achieve it i don't know why uh, it's not like we are using the traffic manager at full potential or something but i don't know why and we need bad bad traffic yes yes um, the roads are pretty much dead and um to be, but to be honest though we yeah. do get quite a lot more traffic now that we've got these people living here I don't know, it's not like we've got lots of public transport, we have no buses, we have like a train network that doesn't really transport people around the city, it's just like a, just for tourists. I don't, I don't know where anyone is, it's, it's craziness, I, I really don't get it. Yeah, yeah, and if you, if you watch some pictures or things that when people are playing vanilla and not only, they show like sausages of of cars you know <laughs> waiting in traffic for god knows we i don't know it's an intersection or someone is uh, just crossing the street stupidly uh, and so on yeah but in yeah these kind of things happens and I, I we don't see it here maybe because we don't plop too many uh, i think commercial shops and uh, industry because usually this is i guess where people uh, why people create the traffic here in city skylines because they are just trying to go from uh, from commercial areas to work and then home and so on yeah I, maybe we've played this game for too long and we just know how to build a functional <laughs> yeah. city you know we need to kind of turn that off and get some people flocking in yeah. and i mean if you're listening <laughs> exactly. to this guys and you have a bit of a suggestion like let us know would be all ears i mean I'm, i've kind of thought about plopping a whole bunch of people like at those events that people kind of flock to. I think they're more like parks and, you know, I could put a whole bunch of them within this little town center that could encourage more people, but who knows? I mean, it still looks really cool and we do get a whole bunch of people kind of do end up rocking up. Um, the cinematics at the end, by the way, guys, look really, really good. So stick around for that. Um, a bit about what I'm doing on screen though. And I've pretty much like, I'm doing a formula that I do quite a lot and that's scrolling through all of my assets and plopping them in a corner, finding the things that fit the best in this area, and then basically just copying and pasting them into this section here. And then once I've got like a handful of that, I just can pick and choose between any of them. And the reason why I do it this way is, one, it gives me a good idea of what I have to use, so I don't, you know, make the entire place and then realize I've missed out on a really key uh, building that I, um, you know, could have plopped down and two, it also kind of makes it really easy to just pick and choose the ones that I really want. Um, it's trying to stick with a particular theme as well. And also in real life, like people, not people, sorry. Um, cities are kind of based on very similar buildings, building styles. So it's not uncommon to see the same building in like a, in one district so I was trying to stick with um, a lot of the same building so you will see a lot of the same building kind of uh, in, in different blocks and you know I try to like make it trying to make them as random as possible but um, at the same time it's not really that uncommon to see and I've got like a real mix between vanilla buildings and buildings that I found from the workshop and like I don't know I think it flows really nicely and I'm really really happy with the um, the end result so definitely stay tuned for the cinematics because they are super super cool yeah I was just watching what you're doing there and um, I've seen you popping those uh, buildings uh, overlapping each other which is really nice and I, it's like that it's just like that in Europe uh, you can see lots of these uh, kind of buildings and um, 
Uh, I, I've seen you plopping, well, I've seen you trying to choose quite a lot. It took you a lot of time to choose uh, the place for the mosque, the big mosque, uh, mm. at the beginning of this uh, video. Um, that's the mosque done by Acapulco uh, some time ago, quite a lot of time ago, uh, when he asked us uh, what kind of um, mosque would we like to have here in Osaka, and uh, we chose this, uh, this one. Uh, even though he hated me when I said this one, <laughs> because that, that this was the <laughs> hardest one to do, <laughs> but he did it very oh, well. Great. He did it very well. It looks very good. It looks so good. Yeah. It looks really, really good. And like I, I think I like the spot where I plopped it down. I just have no. I didn't have enough time to detail it. Plus, I think it deserves its own episode to detail that block because you know it's going to be quite an important historical part of our city. So I think we do, do need to really focus on it. Whereas, you know, a lot of the areas that I'm kind of focusing on now, uh, the block itself is interesting, not just, um, not really so much in particular small builds. However, this little building that I've got going on here, um, I'm, I'm going to say it's a town hall. However, I'm open to suggestion because um, I don't really, um, wasn't really thinking of anything in particular when I was building it. I just knew that it was a, a government building and it was historical and that by itself it doesn't really look Osarian but when you kind of use a lot of um, the assets that have been you know kindly that have been kindly made from for us for this um, series uh, that kind of turns into a bit more of an Osarian build so you know I was just trying to use some walls to I think they are these the walls that Lost Gecko made for us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the ones. Yeah, yeah. So good. I mean, I haven't used them. Actually, no, I used them in the last episode as well. So yeah, I've been using them a little bit in these um, last few episodes just to sort of make a couple more vanilla buildings look a bit more of our style. So um, no, I, I think th that effect looks pretty good. I think in the last episode, uh, the one where you did uh, also the let's see the pool side with the hotels. Of course. Yeah, no, that uh, I know the ones. Uh, now. Yeah, the, uh, in that one you use the uh, beer monkey ones made by for the temple. I think we just got we've got too many. Awesome <laughs> yeah, exactly. Assets now for this series, <laughs> it's and they're still coming up with more. Like it's ridiculous. I, I guess you guys don't really know the assets that are kind of being created for us and the discussions we've been having on Discord, but um, they're really impressive and you know so so much generosity coming out of these guys. We really really appreciate what they've been doing for oh, us. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Like we've said, literally could not have made this series possible. We couldn't have made this series at all because, um, you know, none of these sort of assets actually exist on the workshop. So, um, you know, we are... In I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Uh, without them, uh, this Osaka would have been just a name and that's all. Mm. But now we have... Uh, our own things here. Osaka has its own things and... Uh, it is impressive. I mean, and what uh, what the guy's done, and uh, Bear Monkey is coming with his own ideas and helping us. It's really uh, crazy and beautiful. Um, he keeps sometimes he keeps uh, making surprises for us, uh, finding some new stuff. He does. You know, it's really, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm um yeah. Like I was saying before, I'm really trying to make this area look Osarian, you know, because when you're using so many vanilla buildings, you know, we do have a lot of Osarian buildings that are made by those guys, but we also are kind of limited in terms of like how many buildings we can use. You know, they can't build assets for everything. It's like it's not possible. So, um, however, like you can kind of create a bit more of an Osarian uh, feel to the city. Just by using a couple of um, you know different decals and um, using the props that the guys have made for us, so you know this is what I'm trying to do in these sort of areas, sort of break up a little bit of the vanilla look by putting in a lot of um, a bit more of the Osarian look. Um, here I'm building what I think would probably be like a, a, a historical museum. It, it would make sense to put a historical museum at this location. It could be an art gallery. I'm not really sure, but um. I, I do really like this location for it because it's just opposite the palace. Um, if you were visiting Osara, you'd um, probably have like a day pass where you'd, you know, go visit the palace and then you'd go to the, you know, the town hall, you see the museum, then you go to the mosque. You know, there'd be like a whole area that I, that people would actually pick and choose from for their locations that they'd go and visit. So 
you know, I wanted to kind of keep that idea that um, this is the historical downtown, this is where the tourists would be at, this is probably the better kept site of El Canem rather than uh, maybe the maybe the financial center would be probably a bit more, you know, a bit more flash, a bit more um, uh, rich people kind of running around. This area would be a bit more about tourists, and then the rest of Asai would be, um, you know, just the people who kind of live around this area. Um, but guys, we are kind of getting towards the end of the episodes, and um, the cinematics just around the corner. Skip, do you have any last words before we um, leave the guys? Oh yeah, I want to ask the guys something. Uh, everyone there that are watching this video, you have to hit that like button and leave a crazy comment here because uh, two dollars uh, nailed it up with his build I love it and um, he needs and he deserves all the good things there so he did hit them up <laughs> oh, thanks man um, it was a really good build I really enjoyed it um, uh, yeah sometimes these sort of builds surprise you the ones that you're a little bit more reluctant to do it, this one really did surprise me I really enjoyed doing it um, I just forgot I just quickly mentioned that um, I, a lot of these places, these plazas, I end up dragging a lot of invisible pathways through. So a lot of people do end up walking around here, especially when I plop down um, some event spawners, so people can kind of visit those areas. And I do go through and just crack up a couple of the roads because you know we can't have Osara looking too um, picturesque, too perfect. But guys, that is it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. It's been much appreciated, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later. Bye.